Chapter 16 It had been Captain Guy's original intention after satisfying himself about the Auroras to proceed through the Strait of Magellan and up along the western coast of Patagonia. But information received at Tristan de Acuna induced him to steer to the southward in the hope of falling in with some small islands said to lie about the parallel of 60 degrees south, longitude 41 degrees 20 west. In the event of his not discovering these lands, he designed, should the season prove favorable, to push on toward the pole. Accordingly, on the 12th of December, we made sail in that direction. On the 18th, we found ourselves about the station indicated by glass, and cruised for three days in the neighborhood without finding any traces of the islands he had mentioned. On the 21st, the weather being unusually pleasant, we again made sail to the southward, with the resolution of penetrating in that course as far as possible. Before entering upon this portion of my narrative, it may be as well, for the information of those readers who have paid little attention to the progress of discovery in these regions, to give some brief account of the very few attempts at reaching the southern pole, which have hitherto been made. That of Captain Cook was the first of which we have any distinct account. In 1772, he sailed to the south in the Resolution, accompanied by Lieutenant Fourneau in the Adventure. In December, he found himself as far as the 58th parallel of south latitude, and in longitude 26 degrees 57 east. Here he met with narrow fields of ice, about 8 or 10 inches thick, and running northwest and southeast. This ice was in large cakes, and usually it was packed so closely that the vessel had great difficulty in forcing a passage. At this period, Captain Cook supposed, from the vast number of birds to be seen, and from other indications, that he was in the near vicinity of land. He kept on to the southward, the weather being exceedingly cold, until he reached the 64th parallel, in longitude 38 degrees 14 east, here he had mild weather with gentle breezes for five days, the thermometer being at 36. In January 1773, the vessels crossed the Antarctic Circle, but did not succeed in penetrating much further. For upon reaching latitude 67 degrees 15, they found all farther progress impeded by an immense body of ice, extending all along the southern horizon as far as the eye could reach. This ice was of every variety, and some large flows of it, miles in extent, formed a compact mass, rising eighteen or twenty feet above the water. It being late in the season and no hope entertained of rounding these obstructions, Captain Cook now reluctantly turned to the northward. In the November following, he renewed his search in the Antarctic. In latitude fifty-nine degrees forty, he met with a strong current setting to the southward. In December, when the vessels were latitude 67 degrees 31, longitude 142 degrees 54 west, the cold was excessive, with heavy gales and fog. Here also birds were abundant, the albatross, the penguin, the petterel especially. In latitude 70 degrees 23, some large islands of ice were encountered, and shortly afterward the clouds to the southward were observed to be of a snowy whiteness, indicating the vicinity of field ice. In latitude 71 degrees 10, longitude 106 degrees 54 west, the navigators were stopped, as before, by an immense frozen expanse which filled the whole area of the southern horizon. The northern edge of this expanse was ragged and broken, so firmly wedged together as to be utterly impassable, and extending about a mile to the southward. Behind it, the frozen surface was comparatively smooth for some distance, until terminated in the extreme background by gigantic ranges of ice mountains, the one towering above the other. Captain Cook concluded that this vast field reached to the southern pole or was joined to a continent. Mr. J. N. Reynolds, whose great exertions and perseverance have at length succeeded in getting set on foot a national expedition, partly for the purpose of exploring these regions, thus speaks of the attempt of the resolution. We are not surprised that Captain Cook was unable to go beyond 71 degrees 10, 
but we are astonished that he did attain that point on the meridian of 106 degrees, 54 west longitude. Palmer's land lies south of the Shetland, latitude 64 degrees, and tends to the southward and westward farther than any navigator has yet penetrated. Cook was standing for this land when his progress was arrested by the ice, which, we apprehend, must always be the case in that point, and so early in the season as the 6th of January, and we should not be surprised if a portion of the icy mountains described was attached to the main body of Palmer's land, or to some other portions of land lying farther to the southward and westward. In 1803, Captains Kretzistern and Lezowski were dispatched by Alexander of Russia for the purpose of circumnavigating the globe. In endeavoring to get south, they made no farther than 59 degrees 58 and longitude 70 degrees 15 west. They here met with strong currents, setting eastwardly. Wells were abundant, but they saw no ice. In regard to this voyage, Mr. Reynolds observes that, if Crestern had arrived where he did earlier in the season, he must have encountered ice. It was March when he reached the latitude specified. The winds prevailing as they do from the southward and westward had carried the flows, aided by currents, into that icy region bounded on the north by Georgia, east by Sandwich Land in the South Orkneys, and west by the South Shetland Islands. In 1822, Captain James Weedle of the British Navy, with two very small vessels, penetrated farther to the south than any previous navigator, and this too without encountering extraordinary difficulties. He states that although he was frequently hemmed in by ice before reaching the 72nd parallel, yet upon attaining it, not a particle was to be discovered, and that upon arriving at latitude 74 degrees 15, no fields and only three islands of ice were visible. It is somewhat remarkable that although vast flocks of birds were seen and other usual indications of land, and although south of the Shetlands, unknown coasts were observed from the masthead tending southwardly. Weddell discourages the idea of land existing in the polar regions of the south. On the 11th of January, 1823, Captain Benjamin Morrell of the American schooner Wasp sailed from Kerugland's land with a view of penetrating as far south as possible. On the 1st of February, he found himself in latitude 64 degrees 52 south, longitude 118 degrees 27 east. The following passage is extracted from his journal of that date. The wind soon freshened to an eleven-knot breeze, and we embraced this opportunity of making to the west, being, however, convinced that the farther we went south beyond latitude sixty-four degrees, the less ice was to be apprehended. We steered a little to the southward, until we crossed the Antarctic Circle, and were in latitude sixty-nine degrees fifteen east. In this latitude there was no field ice, and very few ice islands in sight. Under the date of March 14th, I also find this entry. The sea was now entirely free of filled ice, and there were not more than a dozen ice islands in sight. At the same time, the temperature of the air and water was at least 13 degrees higher, more mild, than we had ever found it between the parallels of 60 and 62 south. We were now in latitude 70 degrees 14 south, and the temperature of the air was 47 and that of the water of 44. In this situation I found the variation to be 14 degrees, 27 degrees easterly, per azimuth. I have several times passed within the Antarctic Circle on different meridians, and have uniformly found the temperature, both of the air and the water, to become more and more mild the farther I advanced beyond the 65th degree of south latitude, and that the variation decreases in the same proportion while north of this latitude, say between 60 and 65 south, we frequently had great difficulty in finding passage for the vessel between the immense and almost innumerable ice islands, some of which were from one to two miles in circumference, and more than 500 feet above the surface of the water. Being nearly destitute of fuel and water, and without proper instruments, it being also late in the season, Captain Morrell was now obliged to put back, without attempting any further progress to the westward, although an entirely open sea lay before him. 
he expresses the opinion that, had not those overruling considerations obliged him to retreat, he could have penetrated, if not to the pole itself, at least to the 85th parallel. I have given his ideas respecting these matters, somewhat at length, that the reader may have an opportunity of seeing how far they were borne out of my own subsequent experience. In 1831, Captain Briscoe, in the employ of the Messieurs Enderby, well ship owners of London, sailed in the brig lively for the South Seas, accompanied by the cutter Tula. On the 28th of February, being in latitude 66 degrees 30 south, longitude 47 degrees 31 east, he descried land, and clearly discovered through the snow the black peaks of a range of mountains running east-southeast. He remained in this neighborhood during the whole of the following month, but was unable to approach the coast nearer than within ten leagues, owing to the boisterous state of the weather. Finding it impossible to make further discovery during this season, he returned northward to winter in Van Diemen's Land. In the beginning of 1832, he again proceeded southwardly, and on the 4th of February was seen to be southeast in latitude 67 degrees 15 longitude, 69 degrees 29 west. This was soon found to be an island near the headland of the country he had first discovered. On the 21st of the month he succeeded in landing on the latter, and took possession of it in the name of William the Fourth, calling it Adelaide's Island, in honor of the English Queen. These particulars being made known to the Royal Geographical Society of London, the conclusion was drawn by the body that there was continuous tract of land extending from 47 degrees 30 east to 69 degrees 29 west, longitude, running the parallel of from 66 to 67 degrees south latitude. In respect to this conclusion, Mr. Reynolds observes, and the correctness of it, we by no means concur, nor do the discoveries of Briscoe warrant any such indifference. It was within these limits that Waddell proceeded south on a meridian to the east of Georgia, Sandwichland, and the South Orkney and Shetland Islands. My own experience will be found to testify most directly to the falsity of the conclusion arrived at by the Society. These are the principal attempts which have been made at penetrating to the high southern latitude, and it will now be seen that there remained, previous to the voyage of the Jane, nearly three hundred degrees of longitude in which the Antarctic Circle had not been crossed at all. Of course, a wide field lay before us for discovery, and it was with feelings of most intense interest that I heard Captain Guy express his resolution of pushing boldly to the southward.